Okay, got a great question here from Patrick Melody. He wants to know how do you determine the optimum number, the optimum number of rest days you should take for maximum growth potential? Okay, that is going to depend on what your goals are, um, what your current training is like, and what your current level of conditioning is like. Um, there have been times in the beginning of my career um, where I worked out every single day, like seven days a week, and I and I grew from that. Um, and and how I justify that is. Small muscles, um, small muscles don't need as much rest as big muscles do. Small muscles need small rest, so when your muscles are small, you can work out more frequently. The bigger you become, the stronger you become, the more rest you need. Um, the way my current workouts are now is I I work out, you know, three days on and one day off. I think the Three days on, one day off has been the best for me, but that's, that isn't like, that's not set in stone with me because it all depends on what I've done in my workouts. If you have tremendously difficult workouts, you're going to need more rest. But it also, it also uh, depends on your body part split and how you're working out. If you're doing full body workouts all the time, um, it, it also is going to depend on your goal. But you're going to need you're going to need rest. You're going to need a lot of rest uh, on full body workouts if you expect to to continue to improve with them. If you break your body down into pieces, uh, which is what I which is what I've gotten good at doing, um, you can work out all the time. You can still work out regularly. You can work out six days a week, um, but your strategies have to have to match. Your rest strategies have to match that. Um, how I work out now is is you know I have a leg and core one a chest and arm one, and a shoulder and back one. That way I hit every part of my body. And in each one of the, and then I have a leg and core two, a shoulder, or a chest and arm two, and a shoulder and back two. And what that simply means is, for the first three days, the first half of that program, legs and core workout is, you know, let's say day one is legs and core. I'm gonna hit back squats, cleans, and some form of ab workout, maybe some um, flutter kicks, or some uh, Roman chair sit-ups, or some weighted sit-ups, or some uh, um, hanging knee raises or whatever. Some, I'm going to have some kind of a, a core workout involved separately from the squats and the cleans because those are indirectly working your core also. When I go to le legs, legs and core two, uh, four days later, I'm not doing back squats again. I'm doing front squats, and I'm going to do maybe front squats and snatch, or, or front squats and yoke walk, or front squats and um, uh, sled drags or something like that, sled push and drag. Um, I'm going to do some other, some other explosive movement to complement the squatting because squatting is always in my workouts. I don't ever take squats out of my workouts. Certain exercises are, are, they just never leave. Squats never leave, deadlifts never leave, explosive movements never leave. I may switch um, barbell cleans with axle bar cleans or log cleans but I'm going to do some form of explosive full body movement every leg day. And it, and, and it works like that with chest and arms and shoulders and back too, you know, like I just switch up the workouts so that way I can, I'm hitting, I'm hitting uh, exercises that are going to complement the last workouts exercises. Uh, this way I can continue to work out like I like to because I love working out. I can continue to lift hard because I'm, I'm working, uh, I'm working different muscles. Like I'm not just doing back squats every time, I'm doing back squats, then I'm working front squats, or, or I'm doing power cleans with a barbell, and the next time I'm doing continental cleans with an axle bar, or maybe I'm doing log cleans um, with a log, and, and, and because I have varieties of log sizes, 8 inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch, those all produce a different uh, level of intensity for the workout because of the size difference. Uh, so I like to have a maximum uh, variety in my training so I can continue to train all the time and improve these different pieces of equipment, improve so I constantly continue to get stronger by, by having lots of variety. So to answer that question, that's not, a, that's not a simple question to answer. How do you determine the optimum number of rest days? It all depends on what your goals are, it all depends on what you're currently doing for your training, uh, your size, uh, how your nutrition is. Um, and what your uh, what your rest is like on a on a, on a daily basis. Um, I typically take 
one to two rest days a week where I don't lift weights, but I still work out. I'll go like hike or something like that. That's I use that as active recovery to keep my blood going. Uh, that way I'm, I'm constantly moving. I don't just sit on the couch on a rest day and not do anything. Uh, I can't do that. That I, I do that like once or twice a year. Um, uh, so rest days, there really is no rest day. It's more like you're not going to lift one day, but you're going to do some form of exercise uh, in its place that's that's less tremendous or less demanding. Um, so uh, um, it just really depends on the person and what your goals are. And to be perfectly honest, uh, what the number of rest days are for optimum uh, recovery. So hopefully that answers your question.